welcome to video number 12, I think it is, in the Miniature Hero series. Um, hope you're all well, hope things are going alright for you. It's a lovely, miserable, rainy sort of Thursday here in uh, Darkest Essex. But um, there, we'd, we'd do our best to brighten it up with um, some little bits and pieces that we've got to show you today. Um, yeah, yeah, well, I suppose I'd better get on with these, wouldn't I? Yes, well, one want to talk to you today is one of the little boutique uh, manufacturers that I have had in the shop for a very long time. Um, I suppose it must be coming up for 10 years now, and that's um, mannequin miniatures. And people often they do contact me and say, you know, well, what is mannequin about? Why can we find no web presence for mannequin? Um, where is mannequin based? You know, are there going to be any new releases? And... I can generally say to them that I haven't got a clue. <laughs> um, I can say that it's actually run by a good friend of mine and uh, a lovely chap. He's um, called Adam. I can't, won't give too many details about him because um, obviously, you know, he, he, he'll start getting fan mail and people turning up at his door and things. And, and he, he just wants a quiet life like the rest of us do. But he is a sculptor in his own right and he sculpts his own own miniatures which I'll show you in a moment but he's also bought in ranges from other people and the, basically the reason there is no web presence for a mannequin is that he's just not very technically minded he's artistic he's a very good artist but technical sort of things just isn't his, his ball game so I handle generally the sort of saley bits and the promotion and stuff and he gets on with the artistic -y bits um, when time allows because as I say he's a busy chap um, as we all are, but uh, I've had a restock from him. Um, I've now got everything back in stock, so I thought it's a good time to do a video, show you some of the more in-depth bits and pieces that we've got, and hopefully excite you to part with some cash and buy some of them. So, what should we do first? Well, I thought we'd have a look at some of the undead. Now, these are how they come. You said they get it back. This is Ghost 1. Now, these are interesting, these things, because they are originally, there's one, um, from, sculpted by Bob Ollie. Now, Bob, if you don't know, is, well, you go and educate yourself, really. He's one of the legends in the industry. He has sculpted for just about everybody and anybody. Um, and he has produced, that's Ghost 2, he has produced vast amounts of sculpts for hundreds of different companies um he started off i don't know when but i think he started at essex miniatures and he has worked for citadel in the early 80s he came through uh with iron claw that is the poltergeist he comes with a, with a dagger um iron claw was a sort of imprint a bit like marauder and although marketed by citadel and games workshop and carried all through the shops and everything it, it was its own sort of separate identity and he did all the all the things for that um i think he did other work as well in in there as well but uh yes oh dear that's a bit that's a bit. here we go a grim reaper let's, let's get these set out a bit better there we go grim reaper um, and yes, he's worked for Rail Partha, he's done work for Reaper, and they're still all in, all in the catalogue. Um, he's done quite a lot of work for Reaper, some of the nice, nice bigger things. Um, if you look in the chronoscope line, Colonel Edward Titchener is a classic piece of, um, of his work. Uh, this is how I, I bag them up. Look, this is the shroud. This is very popular, this shroud. Um, and yes, he's he's done all sorts. Well, of course, all right. As well as doing his own bits and pieces, uh, sorry, doing bits and pieces for other people, he's also done his own. And for many years, ran Ollie's armies. There we go. That's the five undead. We'll talk about those in a minute. But Ollie's armies was, of course, very famous for its scrunts, its space dwarves, which I've always felt has been a bit limiting for Bob because he's a damn good a sculptor and can do a lot more than just space dwarves but that's all he seems to be known for these days and this is all right a, a, a small portion of some of the things that he, he should really be known for as well very nice guy um as i say he's been in the industry for a, a long time he is still operational you can still get sculpts by him but i don't think he's running all his armies anymore um but he is open for commission work and if I find a link here, I'll, I'll stick it in the doobly-doo down the bottom. 
but these are the undead i think they were called hell's bile um under when they're in bob bob's range um that mannequin now own and sell and so we will give these a little bit of a a closer look now here we are i've got to get this lined up properly but this is ghost one um and he's 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 quite a chunky chap the thing with all these undead he's floating obviously i mean he, he's a ghost uh and he looks so suitably terrifying um but these are quite a bit bigger than what you would sort of normally normally think i haven't got a uh, a rule here or a scale um you better shall we say uh, you remember him he, he, he's still lurking about that's 25 mil you can see that there is a bit of a size difference there these undead are nice and big. If your eyesight isn't too hot, these are the things to buy. You get a good, I mean, for £4, I think these are at the moment. See, it says Ollie's Army's at the bottom there. You can see that. Um, these are very good value. I keep having to ask Adam, you know, he's got to up the value or anything. They even t there's texture and everything on there. Bob's a very good sculptor. He really is. So that's that. This is the Poltergeist. I don't know quite what difference um, they are between normal ghosts. I mean, this, the poltergeist is obviously armed. Um, he has a dagger, and he's he's he seems got feet. Oh, perhaps that's the difference between ghosts and poltergeists. They they require shoe leather to get about. But that's him. This is the Grim Reaper. Now I don't know if you can see here. I will I will try and point it out with a little pointery thing. Where's, where's, what have I got? Oh, we'll use that little tiny eye stalks you'll see this again on the shroud this is classic bob nobody else i don't think has ever done this so let's bring him right up there but can you see the little eye stalks? now that you can do all this black and just do those a very bright sort of color white to baneful yellow and a pale green or whatever it doesn't half look spooky really does look very nice um, yeah, it's it's a it's a little trick that Bob does. I've not seen any other artist do this, but I, I suppose you can put a couple of little wires in. But it just gives you that um, that look of something rather supernatural and evil. And, and then, of course, we got the shroud. And I'm sure he's made something similar to this for Reaper. But there again, you see the two little eye stalky bits. That's rather nice. People like this. I mean, the, the, the shroud. The, basically, it's a simple design. It is just a piece of. But look how well he has sculpted and twisted that about. So it looks as if it's got arms. It looks as if it should have some sort of leg structure and what have you. Um, it's very, very dynamic picture. Now, the one that is painted in the Miniature Hero shop, if you go and look, is done by a lovely fella. Um, I've known him quite a while, though we've never sort of really met. He's um, he's American guy. He's um, known online as Jabberwocky. Um, and he is an extremely good painter, um, amongst amongst other things. He's he's a very talented guy, but he, he does some an awful lot of painting. And he painted one of these um, for Adam, and um, yeah, he made made a very good job of it. So these are the undead. Now they're part of the mannequin range. So if you do need some some heavyweight, seriously scary ghosty things, these are the things to buy. So we'll we'll push those out the way for the minute. Also in the mannequin range, in, in sort of undead type themey things, and also sculpted by Bob Ollie, is a range of gravestones. Now I've, I've only brought a sample here. There's nine in the range, but this is gravestone four and this is gravestone seven. So we'll, we'll just open these up and so you can see. Bob, again, designed and sculpted all of these. They're very textured. There is um, a lot of detail. The front and back is both different. So these are not just something you can turn around. You can paint them both differently. But uh, let's see if I can get that in, in shot there. Covered with ivy and leaves and things. Um, again, these are these are nice. Um, Jabberwocky's painted a few of these, and they're pictured in the shop as well. Um, so you can see how they, they go. But they are very nicely textured. They're weathered. They are big. I mean, there's the Lord of Undead. Um, which is um, my uh, four scale for this, but uh, yeah, they're, they're quite they're quite substantial. But you know, if you want to put in some serious markers and bits and pieces for scenery, these are the things to go. You see, Bob, there we are Ollie's armies, um, two thousand and six, I think that one, and uh, this is gravestone seven, uh, which we'll just open up, which is slightly smaller, uh, slightly smaller, but a more classic sort of cross shape, and as you see. 
different both sides. There we go. Very nice. People like these when they buy them. The biggest one is, is the um, angel topped um, one, which uh, is right at the uh, end. Uh, Gravestone 9 it's called, but it's, it's got a little angel praying on top of something. On top of a little plinth, it's a pedestal or whatever it is. I ought to put the shroud away, shouldn't I? Come on, come back in your box, your, your little bag. That's it, in you go. So, those are Bob Ollie sculpts. Um, very nice they are too. I'll put a link in the thing if I'm... I'm going to be doing links forever here. But uh, yes, well worth having a look and going forward and, and seeing if any of these can be of use in your future campaigns or if you'd just like to collect them. A lot of people do collect Bob's work. Um, he did have his own um, wiki page. Uh, I don't know if it's still kept up or not, but uh, really nice guy. Nice guy. Another nice guy, um, and um, somebody that um, has done quite a bit for Mannequin, is Kev Adams, the Goblin Master himself. Yes. Good old Kev. Yeah. And there again. I mean, he's, he's a bit sad, and he's a very good sculpt. He, again, a very nice guy. He's known for goblins. He did lots of goblins at Games Workshop. And he's been stuck with it ever since. He can do an awful lot more than just goblins. If you do want figures done, contact him. He does do everything. You name it, he can sculpt it and it will come out very nice. But since we're talking goblins, these are what Adam got from him. Now he got two lots. These are the shadow goblins. And there, there it is. There is one shadow goblin. The shadow goblins are dressed alternatives to the ordinary goblins. So the regular goblins in the mannequin range, effectively, apart from loincloths cloths and bits and pieces, and you know, uh, are pretty much naked. Um, if you require naked goblins, of course, you know that's obviously the thing to go. Um, if you require goblins with a little bit more clothing and detail on, such as a small pouch here, he's got a little tiny dagger at the back there, well, he sculpted that, and um, all sorts of things. He's swinging his morning star things, as goblins are not very very pleasant creatures. Um, you know you, you know where to come. Now that was, that was 11, let's uh, do 12. MMKA, you see, Mannequin Minches, Kev Adams, 12. Very simple, this, this this thing. Now this is, this is a, um, here he is. A nasty looking fella with a sword. They all come with shields um, that you can pop on and they all come with a slotter base. So you just glue the shield on and what have you. And these are, as I say, they're classic Kev. I mean, you'd know those faces anywhere. No one else sculpts that, a, a goblin like that. Um, and yeah, these are all very nice. These are all very nice and all part of the mannequin range. So that was that one. Now, what's the next one? 13 Fitch, come on, remember where the number is now. Now this is a goblin archer, there we go. The ball bit on the bottom here is just a casting sprue. You, you cut that off and that, that's his, obviously his bow. And he's got his own little dagger and belt. And he's got his quiver at the back containing the uh, projectiles. Ready to lob at unsuspecting adventurers. Or whatever else goblins do. Yeah. There's a song about goblins, do you, know, do you remember this? You can get, if you can remember where this come from, you can give yourself a little pat on the back for being very old. But should you remember? Um, see the little goblin, see his little feet, see his little nosy wosy. Isn't the goblin sweet? The truth is they're not sweet. They're horrible little things. But that's part and parcel of their charm. But if you can remember where that come from, and it was it was on a TV show many moons ago, very often repeated. Now that, there is one with a spear. Yes, he's another classic, classic one. You can give yourself a little pat on the back for that. Because you are old like me. Yes. God, dear. Time flies, doesn't it? One minute you sort of think, oh, it's lovely, yes, I'm, I'm young. And the next minute, bloody hell, where's it all gone? And the thing is, I'm not as old as some of them. I mean, if, if you take Shane's age, I mean, he's, he's practically sage-like in his, in his age. Look, that's got a long spear, that one. There you go. You see, and the shield would go on there. I don't know if you can see that. The shield would go on there. But yes, he's practically sage-like in his, his age. Um, he talks to me about things I don't remember. Yeah. He remembers the Suez Crisis. I think he was there. He might have caused it. Knowing Shane, he probably did. And there we have the one with the spear. Now, he's just about to launch his spear at somebody. 
um, again, shield can go on there. The painted examples of these are done by another friend, um, a little more local this time, but um, he goes under the moniker of Alrith72. He doesn't paint so much these days, which is a shame, because he's a very good painter. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're all the painting examples are there. If I can, and if I remember, and if it works, I'll, I'll try and intersperse some pictures and things, so you can see. So, so that's it, so it's over there. Now, not only those, but Adam got Kev to sculpt a brand new goblin. One that is, a, a, well, it's a mannequin special. Nobody else has this, nobody else has ever seen it, nobody else has the rights to produce it except Mannequin. And this is Gorot, the Goblin Assassin. And as you can see, he's well tooled up. He's a dual wield with two swords, numerous throwing daggers, probably a pouch of poisons located somewhere. He's a real sneaky git, as uh, they used to be, and this is classic Kev Adams Goblin work. He's um, marvellous. The painted example for this... Remy 70, uh, 78 or 82, whatever he is, has done some on the site. And also the cover image is done again by Jabberwocky, showing off some quite incredible skills, because this isn't very big. I mean, here we go, let's, let's bring bring him in again. I mean, you know, there's a lot of years difference all right, in scale creep and things, and it's still a bit smaller than the Lord of Undead, Lord of Darkness there. So there you go, that's some... That's, um, well, that's that's that. Gorot the Goblin Assassin. You want to meet him on a dark night, really, would you? Yeah, face only a mother could love, but there you see, he comes in his little own little packet. Yeah, and that that's what you get. So that's a bit of an overview of Mannequin on the ranges that he has bought in. Now there is a bit more than that. There is mind out undead. Adam is also, as I said earlier, a sculptor in his own right. He's not a professional, but he is somewhat more talented than me. Um, mind you, I think the cat is more talented than I am, but you know, we'll leave that alone. And he has sculpted three figures of his own. There could be something in the pipeline, we hope, but at the moment, three figures are available. And we have, which is the first one, uh, which is the first one, here we go, Ellie Autumnleaf, which is there. Then we have Sasha, who is a barbarian, and then we have Jeanette. Now, these are all very quite nice. They've got a bit, a bit of the spyglass look about them, if you remember those. Um, this is Ellie Autumn Leaf. Now, she's a ranger. That's how Adam de designed her to be. And she has a bow, which we can see in there on the side of her cape. She has a sword on the back, which is um, rather nicely done. She's got a quiver of arrows sticking out there, which she's reaching for. And, yeah, it's just very nicely done. It's, I dare I say, a less complicated figure than you get in an awful lot of places now, simply because it's got more straight areas where you can have a bit of play with tones and textures and shading and things, and um, it's, I quite like that. I quite like it. It's, it's not so fussy. It's just that uh, you, can, you can work a bit more by painting on the miniature. You've got wonderful areas there for freehand, and for just generally playing about with. And um, yeah, it's a nice miniature. So that is, uh, let's put it back in, that is Ellie. She's always nice. That was the first one of Adam's. Then he came up with Sasha. Now, Sasha has a bit of a Magic the Gathering vibe. Again, dual wield. Um, she is a female barbarian type. Um, muscly and scantily clad, as female barbarians tend to be. I've never met one in real life, but, you know, it'd be interesting, I suppose. And, yeah, the um, the sword is covered by the hair and things. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a nice little figure. Um, I wish I could sculpt that well. So, that is the second one. That's Sasha. Doesn't require any assembly. Then we get to um, Jeanette. And um, Jeanette, I've had a little bit more of a... I play with myself because I've he's given me kind he's given me some some of these and I have painted painted Jeanette um, and here we go now this is what you get when you order Jeanette and I think it's it's rather good value so you get the base figure which is here um, with one raised sword 
and an arm missing. And you think, hello, the one arm missing figure, that's not so good, is it? But that's because you get this. Let's just open that up a bit. You get this little sprue of extras. Now, you get two different arms here with two different swords. So you can either have that sword or that sword. Believe it or not, there is a bit of a difference. That is quite longer than that one, and it's got a bit wider hill. Or you can have the shield, which has its own arm and everything attached on that as well. And that's all rather nice. So you can either have dual wield um, with a choice of swords, or you can have the shield. Also, of course, you can keep these pieces for later. If you've got a conversion or something you want to do, or you've got a hand with a sword all ready to roll. So uh, that's quite good value. And again, it's another, it's a nice, clean, uncomplicated sculpt, although there is an awful lot of buckles on the legs there. And um, yeah, it's it's one of Adam's, I think I think it's probably the, the, the best one he's done. As, as I say, as hopefully there's new ones coming. Oh, that's a bit bent. Let me move that back a bit. There we go. But yeah, that's, um, that's one of his done. Now, I have painted one. And this is it. I went for the dual wield option, and it's not the best brushwork, obviously, and things. But um, I'm, I do, you know, I am still learning. But yeah, you see, you can, you can work in some tones and bits and pieces and things there. Hopefully, that's showing up. And it's just a nice figure and a little t t scenic base with some some rocky bits on it. Because um, she is stood on a rock. If if you look at the, the initial cast, you see it stood on a rock. So it it sort of worked quite nicely. Um, yeah, and that's some. Um, that is uh, Jeanette. 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 I think Jeanette is nicer. If there are Jeanettes out there looking at this, please, please do write in and say the how you prefer your name to be pronounced. That that would be nice. Um, so there we go. Oh, put, put that there. Yeah, it's sort of a, a finishing shot as we we come to the end of this little tour of Mannequin Miniatures, the boutique uh, miniature manufacturer that um, only I stock. But uh, he's well worth looking at. It's well worth looking at. There's some very nicely sculpted miniatures. They're very good value. And they paint up nicely. Um, you can see on the reviews on the site that people like them. So, yeah, do give them a look. I'll put a link down in the, in the bottom and you can, you can see from there. Um, things are ticking over quite well here at, um, at uh, Miniature Heroes HQ. We've got restocks and bits and pieces. ReaperCon is coming on the 3rd of September and it's online. So we're all able to go, I think. Uh, Rhonda Bender is doing online painting classes for the Learn to Paint kit. So if you have bought one and if you wish to do things like that, um, or at least study under Rhonda, she's um, a very, very, very good painter, uh, you can um, pop along, basically, and I think just sort of turn up. I'm not quite sure how it's all going to work. Um, Reaper saying it's going to be very wonderful and things, and I hope it will be, but it is all online due to COVID problems. Um, so yeah, we all get to have a, have a bit of a look. So that's going on. Um, hopefully as well there will be some new releases. I know they've got an airbrush they're quite ha quite pleased about. That's going to be released. And yeah, that's, that's all coming along. Um, apart from that, I don't think there's a great deal of other news. If you could, oh yes, the, the newsletter. Um, as I mentioned last time, um, <laughs> I, I've been a bit of a twit. And I've actually deleted everybody that was on the newsletter. And I, I can only apologise for this. I, I was trying to tidy things up and it, it didn't really work. Um, so if you do like to hear from Minch Heroes via the newsletter occasionally, please do subscribe. It's, it's at the bottom of the front page. Um, it's just a matter of signing up with name and email and you, you will receive um, bits and pieces as I, as I tend to do them. Um, I'm not um, overly good at doing newsletters and things not as not as good as some companies but i do turn them out every so often so if you could sign up that would be great because i've only got 15 subscribers at the moment and i had um over, over 1500 before so i'm oh, i could kick myself oh dear uh, i shouldn't be running a web shop really I, I just not technically enough for it but there we go so Thank you very much for bearing with us. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Have a good look. Like and share if you can. Um, we're getting towards 100 subscribers. 
If I do get to 100 subscribers, then Shane has agreed to do a video where he will prepare, in a professional manner, a Metal Pathfinder Red Dragon. Um, and I will be able to be there to, to comment and, and things as well. But once we get to 100 views, then that'll, that'll go line. So we've not got too far to go. If you can share this around and get the extra 100 um, subscribers, well, get the extra few subscribers, I think we need about 18. Um, so once we hit the 100 mark, that will happen. Until then, I hope you all keep safe, enjoy painting, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheerio!